Good morning, Epicenter Church, and welcome to Home Church Live. My name is Tim, and I am the children's pastor here at Epicenter Church. During the safe at home mandate, we want to abide by the rule of the state and keep our church family safe. So each segment will now be filmed at our respective homes. We still want to stay connected with each other, so stick around after service. And if you're not part of a life group or a home church group yet, join a pastoral connect at 11.30 or 1.30 p.m. Um, I also want to take this time to speak on behalf of Kingdom Kids. So this is a message for both kids and parents. Um, there's a lot going on right now, and I don't want to go into all the details of it, but I do want to share a personal story of something that happened to me last week. Um, last week, I, I was about to, to go to bed and fall asleep, and right before, Right as I closed my eyes, fear and worry just overtook my heart. And I'm going to be very very honest and real. It was so strong that I couldn't fall asleep. So you know what I did? I began praying to Jesus. I told him how I felt. I told him what was in my heart. And I just began just, just sharing these things to Jesus. Somehow, in the midst of my prayer, I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning, guess what? Fear and worry and anxiety were all gone. And instead in my heart, there's a true spirit of peace. And the first thing that I wanna to share to, to all our kids and to all our parents is that there's a person by the name of Jesus who could give us true peace in the midst of all this. Now, this is a, now, now I wanna move on and talk to our kids right now. If your biggest struggle right now is just straight up boredom because you are just cooped up, locked up, and you can't go out as much, I want you guys to take a heart of thankfulness. And to all the kids out there who during this period has not felt any fear or worry or anxiety, I want you to go look at your parents and give them a thumbs up and be and say this, good job, mom, good job, dad, all right? Because your parents are pretty awesome because they want to provide for you, they want to protect you, and they want to just love on you, especially in a season like this. Now, I also want to uh, take a time to pray for all the moms and dads out there. So what I'm going to ask right now is for all the kids to put a hand on either your mom and dad. I mean, put your hand on, on the shoulder of your mom and dad right now. And this is the prayer that I want you guys to make. And this prayer is going out to all moms and dad. And I'm going to start crying. And this, just repeat after me. And just for the kids, I want you to know that this prayer is going to mean a lot to a lot of mom, mom and dads out there. And this is the prayer that I want you guys to make. To all the moms and dads out there that are fighting through worry or fear, we want you to know that God will be strong for you. We also call upon the peace of Jesus into the hearts and for them to know that peace will be found in the midst of this. We also pray for protection, for just even the need for financial resources, and just for even community to be upon these families that are in deep need. Father, we lift up all these families to you, and we pray for the peace and provision that only God could give. Amen. All right, thanks, guys. Um, goodness <laughs> let me just close it off i'm just going to read off the slide now this is now we've got a great service today we'll be praying for our international family and then we got an awesome word from ben and eunice huey but first here's a special message from pastor john what i know let's check it out hey epicenter this is pastor john evelyn and i are in the beautiful island of maui where we'll be for a couple more days uh, we've found um, solace in Psalm 91 that basically says when we shelter in the hand, al hand of the Almighty, uh, He will protect us under His wings. And uh, we've just found that to be really crucial uh, during this time. Uh, you know, we prayed and asked, why sabbatical now? And feel like, first, God has a special season for us. Uh, but also for our staff in our church. And uh, we feel really confident in the leadership that Janet and Fiona, our elders and our staff are bringing and just commend them to you. We feel like uh, as they're making big decisions, 
God has things for us, for you, and for the church, because none of everything that's going on uh, has surprised God, and we really trust in his leadership as well as the leadership of the church. Uh, let me just say, you know, this is a, a time where fear can really grip our hearts. And in this thing, in a time like this, the things we learned in 2019 are really important. We can build in a storm. We can walk on water in a storm. We can be at peace and see God's kingdom grow in the middle of storms. And this is the time for us to put these things in place now. I want to encourage you, you know, when we've got less structure in our life, our kids are home, we're home, everybody's trying to figure stuff out, we need more structure. And I think this is particularly the case when there are so many uncertain things, not only with regard to our health and the health of our parents, but also with regard to our finances. We've got the gift of time. Let's take time to seek the invitation for the Lord, for us and our families as to what he has for us and really receive those things. And secondly, I believe that this is actually a great time for us to reach out uh, to, you know, when you tune in on Epicenter uh, Home this week at 10 a.m., um, start life groups with people who aren't connected to church. Zoom them uh, because this is the time in times of chaos and crisis for people to find Jesus. Everybody's consumed by fear. Let's be the ones that lead in finding that our rest and hope is in Him. Uh, thank you so much for praying for us. We're praying for you. And uh, let's get everything that God has for us, for our families and for our world in this time. God bless you. Well, hello, Epicenter. My name is Riley. I'm a member here at Epicenter. I just want to welcome you. I'm actually recording this live from San Francisco. I'm here with my family. We are having so much fun and making the most of it. And as I am talking to you, there is a deer, which you can't see, but a deer staring at me through a window. So I'm, I'm having fun over here. But here at Epicenter, I know that a lot of things are changing, but one thing that is not changing is our values. And here at Epicenter, we believe that our relationship with God means you encounter God, make disciples, and change the world. And if it is your first time here, thank you so much for joining us and taking precious time out of your Sunday to be with us even online. And I just want to encourage you after the service, go to epicenter.org slash connect. And we would just love to meet you, get to know you and see how we can support you in a season like this. The next thing I want us to know as a church community is that we have home church groups. And while we have to be in self-isolation, we do not need to be in emotional, spiritual, or social isolation. So what these groups are, they're designed for us to meet regionally online, watch the service, talk about the teaching, and pray together. So that even in a, in a craziness of this current climate, we can still continue to deepen our community within at the center. The next thing I want us to know about is that we have the Artist Collective. And at Epicenter, we have some amazing artists. And, you know, I personally can sing. Would you like to hear it? <clears throat> no, I'm not going to sing for you. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. But unlike me, there are some very talented people at Epicenter. And so the Artist Collective, we already had a meeting on the 26th. We're going to have a second meeting. Um, which is going to be April the 2nd from 7 to 9, which is a Thursday. So if you go to epicenter.org slash events to check it out. And finally, and lastly, I just want to encourage us that we have a prayer ministry. And they're meeting out. You can sign up online for a 10-minute prayer appointment. But in times like this, in the chaos and craziness and maybe the anxiety and depression that you are feeling, prayer works. Let me say that again. Prayer works. As simple as that may be, prayer is one of our greatest weapons in a time like this. Prayer is something that can bring you peace and joy and a connection and intimacy with God. And so our prayer ministry, they want to join you alongside the season and pray over you. So check that out. But 
those are all our announcements we have today. I just want to make sure that you check out epicenter.org for all the things that I was talking about and more. But with all that in mind, church, I miss you guys. But for now, let us jump into worship. Well, good morning, Epicenter Church. We're so glad that you're here to worship with us for Home Church Live once again. Welcome to our living room this morning. Uh, we're so excited to lead you in worship from our home. Why don't we stand this morning wherever you are across this city as we prepare to worship our Lord. The highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Yes, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. ransom me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh is free indeed I'm a child Father's house, in my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Ooh, thank you God. I am who you say I am. 
is our yes and amen. Oh, all your promises are yes and amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your kindness, God. Yes, we trust you, God, through the storm, Jesus, and I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence It's your faithfulness And I will rest In your promises My confidence It's your faithfulness And I will rest In your promises My confidence It's your faithfulness, faithful you are, faithful forever you will be, faithful you are, oh, all your promises are yes and Is our yes and a sing faithful, oh faithful you are faithful forever you will be faithful you are oh, all your promises are yes and a Is our yes and amen, and all your promises are yes and Just a whisper You breathe in me a new 
We say you deserve everything, all the glory, all the honor, because you are worthy. And we praise you, God. Your song, your worship will always be on our lips. May it be in this season, every day, in our homes, God, a song of worship rising to you all across this city, all across our homes, because we love you, God, and you are with us. We just say that we trust you this morning. We trust your plan. And as we turn our attention to your word, we're available. We're available to you, open to what you have to say to us, Holy Spirit. So come, speak to us. Continue to be with us this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. And now let's gather for a time of intercession. This morning, we want to be praying over our friends and families that are serving overseas. Currently, we have several people in the field who have prayed and sought the Holy Spirit in this situation and feel they are called to stay in their respective countries. We want to be the family of God that rallies around them in prayer as they face a challenging season in a foreign context. If you want to follow along, we have some prayer points on the next slide. Please pray for the wisdom, health, and safety of our international family as they maneuver countries with a much more limited healthcare system than even our own is right now. Pray for all the visa situations to be resolved. Many of our people overseas are dealing with visa approval difficulties and need breakthrough. 
Pray for the peace as they are away from their loved ones and are already dealing with the stressors of living in another culture on top of this situation. And pray that God would give them opportunities to minister to their neighbors as they ride out this season in solidarity with those they are loving and serving in these countries. If you are with your family or with your home group, please pause this video right now so that you can pray together. Then I'd like to invite you to come back as I close this time in prayer. Now let's bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, we're just so thankful for the individuals who have said yes to your call to the nations and are currently overseas. We ask for your protection and guidance in this uncertain time. And if there are areas of fear, may your love fill them so that they are rooted in faith and wisdom instead. And God, in regards to their visas, may you allow the government to create ways where they can renew it without having to travel. And God, we ask that you open conversations with their neighbors and the people that they're reaching out to so that they may hear of your love and of your good news. We lay this all at your feet and trust in your process. In Jesus' name, amen. And now I'd like to transition into a time of offering. I'm aware that for many of you, this is a really difficult time. So for those that are financially able, we want to encourage you to continue giving because we as a church want to be able to pull together our available resources to help the needs of this community. And for parents with little kids, although we may not have a bucket where we can encourage the kids to donate into, we want you to continue that tradition at home. If you have a jar, a bucket of your own, or a cup, have the little ones practice giving every Sunday so that when it's time for us to gather back together, you're able to bring that and contribute to the bigger bucket. If you're interested to know how you can give, please refer to the instructions on this slide. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the generous offerings, especially in a time like this. We ask that you multiply what is given to be able to help those in need. Thank you for your generosity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Epicenter Church, hope you guys are excited because we have a special treat for you. Today, Pastor Ben Huey and Pastor Eunice Huey are coming together to give us today's word. Get excited. Excited. Well, hey, Epicenter Church family. How are you all doing? Welcome to Home Church Live. My name is Ben. This is my wife, Eunice. Hi. Hey, we want to welcome you to our home. And uh, listen, really excited today because I get a tag team preach with my wife. Awesome. All right. So quick question. How many of you guys have been cooking a lot more now that you've been at home? Anybody? Well, listen, in our family, Eunice is a main chef and she's awesome at it, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and a little bit about myself. I'm not like the biggest cook at all. In college, actually, people would come over to my apartment, me and my roommate's apartment, and they'd be like, hey, any snacks you guys got? They'd try to scour our cabinets and all that they would find would be this one bottle of soy sauce. And that is all that I had in our college apartment. One bottle of soy sauce. But listen, I've come a long way. You know, recently, especially during this time at home, I've been getting into something called the Instant Pot. And so for those of you that don't know what an Instant Pot is, it's basically, it's a pressure cooker. And you basically put whatever meat, veggies, ingredients you have into this pot, and you lock the lid and it's a sealed pot. So there's no outlets. So all the heat, when you turn on all the heat, the steam and the pressure builds up so much that it starts to break down 
and tenderize the meat and it draws a flavor out from it in a short amount of time. And you know what, for us, I feel like we're in an interesting time right now. You know, I feel like we're in a pressure cooker. You know, we're literally sealed in and shut in in our homes with no outlets to go and the pressure is building. And we've probably seen it, you know, families, you've probably been feeling it with your children at home. You know, with children, you've probably been feeling it with your parents at home. You know, any of you who have roommates, you've probably been feeling that as well as there's nowhere else to go. And, you know, there's also the pressures of, you know, feeling that financial stress and also the fears going on and the anxiety that you may be feeling. All these things are being built up in us. And you know what? Our outlets have been taken away. So, for example, the gym. Oh, man, I miss the gym. I, I you know, can't go to the gym anymore. You know, the restaurants, you know, hanging out with friends, social gatherings at restaurants or even dates with us. Like, Boba. yeah, it's gone. You know, movie theaters, entertainment, all of that stuff has been gone. And so now we feel like, listen, are all, are all the things that we're building up inside of us. And some of you are feeling it right now, like or seeing it right now, like, OK, flavors are being drawn out of me, the good, the bad and the ugly and you know what character issues habits it doesn't look pretty all the time but listen there's good news in the midst of this the good news is that god is working in the midst of this pressure he's working in the midst of this pressure amen and so you know we've been going on a series on called daring a dream and it's about faith and Pastor Josh last week talked about the story of Abraham, and he encouraged us to stay locked in in a time of wandering, locked into God when you don't know what's going on because God is still there in that midst, and he has promises that he wants us to walk into. And so today we're going to look at the story of Abraham again because God wants to speak through his story in another different way. So before we start, I'm going to pray for us. All right, God, would you, would you come and would you speak to each and every single one of us right now as we open our hearts to you? Holy Spirit, bring up the things that you want to highlight within us so that you can work in us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so our passage today comes from Genesis 12, 1 to 3. And this is the first time that Abraham pops up in the Bible. This is Abraham's call. This is God's call to Abraham. All right, so here we go. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Through you. So here we have God inviting Abraham on this journey, this adventure, this life with him. He's like, hey, leave your home and come here with me. And this is my promise to you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you into a great nation. You're going to father a great nation. I'm going to bless your name. You're going to be famous. And then you will be a blessing. I'm going to protect you, right? I'm, those, you bless, those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. And through you, again, all peoples on earth will be blessed. Mm -hmm. So just an incredible blessing I promise know. from God to Abraham. And to sum it up, I want you guys to think of an hourglass shape. You guys know what an hourglass looks like, right? So it's all of God's blessing, all funneled in towards one family, Abraham and his family. And then from Abraham and his family, all that blessing, they will be the ones blessing the earth. God doesn't oh. usually do this he doesn't just rain down blessing on everyone he does that too but how he likes to work is to bless his people bless a single family and from then on we bless the earth oh. guess what we are part of this family i was just telling my kids this week that abraham i was like hey did you guys know that abraham is your great 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 grandfather and they're like, what? No way. I was like, yeah, the Bible says so. So in Galatians 3.29, it says, And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. 
So when we made that decision to follow Jesus, we were adopted, we were grafted into this family, Abraham's family. And this promise, the one I just read from Genesis, that applies directly to us. We are right here in this hourglass. We are right in this middle area, receiving God's blessing and blessing others. And so we just want to encourage you guys this with this verse mm-hmm. today um, that, hey, God longs to bless you right now, right here. His heart is positioned today in this season to pour his blessing out on you, Amen. his people. You know, the Genesis 12, the blessing starts out with this. I will make you into a great nation. Do you guys remember that God is promising Abraham? Abraham, the guy that could not have kids most of his life. It says that Sarah, in the Bible, it says Sarah, his wife, could not bear a child. And so it was a very big challenge for him to believe that God's going to make him into a great nation when he couldn't even have one kid. Kind of sucky, kind of sad, but... The Bible said when Abraham finally did have that one child, he was basically dead. He was so old, he was as good as dead. So sad, right? So sad. (laughs) He was 100 years old. And then his baby, which is Isaac, when he grew up, he also had infertility issues. He had to pray and, I don't know, I think fast and pray and pray and pray. Um, And then finally, when he was older too, God gave him and his wife twins, Jacob and Esau. So not a very promising start to this Mm -hmm. great nation promise that God wants to give Abraham's family, right? They could barely have one kid, barely have two kids. Do you know when this promise was finally fulfilled? I I, kind of know (laughs) because, you know, obviously we prep for it, but okay. (laughs) Let me tell you, (laughs) let me tell you, when this promise was finally fulfilled, it was not in the promised land. It was not in a time of abundance or well-being. This promise of a great nation finally happened when God's family was in Egypt, in a foreign land. I'll go get her. <laughs> you keep going. Okay. Okay, sorry, our kid is calling us. We locked them in a room, but they're not locked. But anyway, um, so Abraham's grandson, Jacob, He moved his family to Egypt during a time of famine. And it was here that God started multiplying them. They had a lot of kids. Their kids started having a lot of kids. And those kids started having a lot of kids. And God multiplied them into a big people group. They were so big, they were so numerous, that the Egyptians started becoming afraid. And the Egyptians made them slaves. They beat them and they killed their baby boys. You guys know Prince of Egypt, story of Moses. This is during this time. It was in a time of oppression when their freedom was taken away, that that it was a dark time in slavery that God fulfilled his promise to them. I love this. Exodus chapter one, verse two, it says, the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. You know, the enemy has his plans and he's trying to crush God's people. He's trying to wipe them out, trying to kill them out. But God is always moving in the undercurrent Hmm. to bless us, to increase in us, to make us great. That's God's heart. So Abraham's family, they went into Egypt as a small family, but when they came out, they were a great nation. Hey, this is good news for us today. God is always moving in the undercurrent. As Ben said earlier, we're kind of in this pressure cooker Mm -hmm. time, this funky, weird time Mm -hmm. um, with a lot of stressors, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, learning how to do life in a new way, working from home, homeschooling, all that. Plus, there are so many changes and loss from the loss of maybe prom, um, possibly graduation. Birthdays, like birthdays. I turned 40 and couldn't really celebrate it out. We celebrate his 40th birthday which over I love, Zoom. Which over I love, Zoom. I love. <laughs> yeah. Um, our friends were supposed to get married next weekend, but now that's up in the air. I mean, they're not doing it this weekend. So, yeah. Also, funerals are being canceled. I had a funeral my family being canceled. And a lot of dreams and expectations that we had for a future is shifted overnight. This is a really hard time for a lot of us. 
it's hard to see the good. It's hard to see the blessing of God, maybe for a lot of us now. But we're in a series on faith right now. And faith is not faith when we can see everything. When everything is going Mm. according to our plan. That's right. When things are amazing. I mean, can we call that faith? Faith is faith when things are hard, when things are confusing, when things are blurry. But we still believe. Abraham believed until he was 100 years old. And when he was practically dead, you know, he believed his whole life for this. And he saw the fulfillment of a promise. And this is the reason why he's called the father of our faith. Because he believed God when everything said otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, hey, we're part of this family of faith as well. That's right. So let's not look and get our cues from everything crazy going out around out there. This is a time for us to dive deep, to draw deep, reach down in the undercurrent and hold on to God's goodness. Say, God, show me your goodness in this season. I'm going to discover you, God, Mm. as good when everything else seems crazy. Amen. 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 It's awesome. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) So just as God used Israel, one of Israel's darkest time to fulfill his promise to them, God is using this weird, funky time, hard time for us. And he's wanting to use this time to bless us, to fulfill his promise to us, to make us great, Mm -hmm. to strengthen us, to grow us, Mm. to increase in us. I see God removing a lot of those outward, external things, things that we've leaned on for our sense of identity, security, Um, significance, even our sense of Mm well-being, things that make us feel that we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. I feel like God is removing those things so we can draw in right now. And he is wanting to strengthen us right here. Mm -hmm. Our inner life, our inner core, our home life, our family. That's right. (laughs) Things that we can't see. Most people can't see, but really make us who we are. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about habits here. I'm talking about attitudes. I'm talking about the way we talk to our kids when we're stressed, Mm -hmm. the way we talk to our spouses, our parents, um, how we act when things don't go our way. So, um, Ben, I think we've been married for... Almost 11 years. I know this. Good job. (laughs) A little over 10 years. A little over 10 years. Almost 11, yeah. Yeah, and okay. And yeah, we've had our fair share of, you know, conflict, Mm -hmm. obviously. And Mm -hmm. um, not obviously, but (laughs) we had our fair share of conflict. And in our early years, the way we dealt with conflict, it wasn't the greatest way. It wasn't the healthiest way. Eunice would be like... Okay, so I would, a lot of times when I'm stressed and frustrated, we're disconnected. I would push him. Um, I would use my words and I would demand answers and I would just keep talking and justifying all that. And I'm the type of guy that's like, hey, I, I don't I can't like engage at that speed or that fast. I'm more the type of guy that I like bottle up inside and like, OK, I'm getting pressed. It's almost like that pressure cooker. You know, and all of a sudden I'll just blow up and it's like, ah, you know, kind of crazy. And then not only that, but I would just leave the home. You know, I turn off my phone. I leave for a couple hours. And that's just how I dealt with it. But then, you know, um, around our sixth year marriage, you know, fifth or sixth year marriage, marriage. we moved to Mongolia for missions, right? And we lived in this small apartment and it was during the winter time. I distinctly remember this is like winter time. It's the coldest capital in the world. It gets down to negative 50 degrees. You don't want to be outside. And it's also one of the most polluted places in the world because, man, it's like a barbecue when you walk out. And so I remember just like when we got into arguments or conflict, I didn't even want to go outside because I don't even know the place that well. I'm kind of scared to be out there. And especially it's so cold and so polluted. We had to work out everything inside the apartment. I would be on the couch and then, and then she would be. Yeah. So basically a lot of the things, the crutches that we leaned on to deal with our conflict were removed and it forced us to learn new ways mm-hmm. of dealing with conflict. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. God used that. Mm-hmm. God used that season to rewire some things in our marriage, to reset some things, to strengthen us. And it carries on to even today. I mean, I could say that we were blessed that he made us great, at least the way we fought better <laughs> during that season, That's during true. that hard time. That is very, very true. And I know that some of us, you know, married couples are feeling it right now. And, you know, 
it's that intense time and like things are coming up and it's not easy and we can totally relate to that we were reading news articles you know um uh different news articles were saying how like divorce rates in china has skyrocketed you know during this time one of the headlines it said this it said divorce cases rise in china as couples spend too much time together during coronavirus home quarantine man that is intense it's on the rise right here and you know we see it oh my gosh with families and kids you know both ways the parents are with the children and like oh for us with young kids it is not easy they're like bickering and fighting every five minutes and we're at me very needy yeah and, and it's just like whoa okay here we go here we go it's not easy and some of you you know kids maybe with your parents it hasn't been easy in that sense as well um, you know, we had our outlets, but now we don't. Yeah. Hey, we want to encourage you guys. This is a time to not draw back or pull back, but to lean in and ask God like, Hey, I'm in this like difficult situation, stuck with these people, um, whom I love, but hard to be with all the time and ask God like, Hey, how are you rewiring? How are you wanting to strengthen my family in this time? How do you want to strengthen me? Um, this is a time to connect with your kids like you never had before. Now is a time to work out those character issues, those bad attitudes, those things that you've been seeing, you want to even trying to work out, but now we can go deep into it. And I don't even want to say sibling conflict. Oh my goodness. Can I just say that like every 15 to 20 minutes, we have someone yelling, crying, tattletelling. Um, it's so annoying. But on the flip side of it, we're doing a lot every 15, 20 minutes than we do reconciliation, repentance, asking of forgiveness, hugging, making up. And so there's a lot of godly relating happening here, mm -hmm. ungodly and then godly. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of rewiring how we do family together. Yeah. And it's, it's sweet, hard, but sweet. Yes. And for those of us who are not married, we don't have kids. You have a lot of time on your hands. It's really easy to like go home, binge on Netflix, show after show, you know, series after series, get on the internet, just be inundated with all the news, different outlets, or like get on social media and really just like isolate yourself. But just want to encourage you that during this time, you know, there's this is a gift in a sense where God has given you a lot of time. Like there's things that are that are that God's placed in you that He wants to draw out, and there's this verse in Romans that talks about awaken my soul, awaken my spirit from slumber. And I just feel like this is a time for us to awaken. Like it, it gives us opportunity to awaken the things that God has deposited in your hearts, whether it's like creativity, like whether it's like writing a worship song, or like get Eunice just got back on the piano, which is awesome, you know, or like journaling, or like blogging, or you know, being influenced on social media. There's different things that God has placed within you that now is the time he's wanting to draw out these flavors in you. So I want to encourage you to carve out time. Don't self isolate. You know, we have uh, our, our life groups, uh, find them online in zoom, you know, to connect and like go deeper, lean in and press into the things like God, let this be a moment where I get these things to be drawn out, awaken my spirit during this time. Amen. So we're just actually going to give you guys, just a few seconds right now. I'm going to just take an inventory of your life, of your home life right now, and 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 ask God, let Holy Spirit speak to you right now. Like, where are you wanting to strengthen me right now? Mm -hmm. How do you want to bless me? Because his heart is positioned to bless us in this time. But how and where? Let's be aware right now. So go ahead and take just a minute and and ask God right now. time you can pause <laughs> you could put this on pause but we're just gonna finish up now you know the second part of the passage it says that God says I will bless you right and he also says and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you and God's blessings they are for us and they are through us that's how his blessings work it's not only for us but it goes through through us to the people around us 
and especially during this time you know we're so encouraged hearing different stories of how our church family some of you have been stepping up to be a blessing to others whether it's like hey all right i have this gift that god's drawing out of me of of sewing so i'm going to make you know these face masks because they're they're limited out there but this is there any need i can make face masks for for healthcare workers for anybody seeing that step up or seeing some of you like you know on uh creating a zoom prayer meeting saying anybody can come in pray. we want to pray together we'll pray for you are you feeling lonely are you feeling i say hey come to this we see our people organizing these things you know if you don't know how to bless someone else during this time prayer is a good place to start you can always pray for someone you know you can always offer to pray for someone like that we see school teachers we see like other homeschool parents giving their resources like hey i know a lot of you don't know anything about homeschooling but hey here's some curriculum here's that you can use here's curriculum for your friends that are not even part of our church they can use you know to to help during this time and we we're seeing our church family step up in ways talks of organizing you know um buying groceries for people who are over 65 how can we buy it and deliver it you know to them and so we as epicenter church family we have a bunch of i know there's so many things going on but we're we're we're, we're building infrastructure so that we can move together to bless through us as a family to those around us in our community and those around us and so for more information keep updated on epicenter.org you know you can find out what we're thinking and how we want to move forward together as a family amen, amen. all right a couple of last thoughts for you guys questions for you to reflect as you go off into either your home <clears throat> churches or zoom groups are right here number one where do i struggle most with during this time of quarantine where do i struggle most with during this time of quarantine number two where does the holy spirit want to strengthen me in this season it could be like the dreams and gifts type of deal maybe unhealthy, unhealthy habits he wants to address or you know maybe habits that he wants to form in you the question is where does the holy spirit want to strengthen me i just want to cut in right there and say that remember the israelites they went into egypt as a small family but they came out as a nation hmm. and so we're going in how we are now but how do we want to come out what is god wanting us to walk out of this time with what treasures does he want to give us so mm -hmm. start asking God those questions. That's so good. And the last thing is this, is how can I be a blessing to others? So those three questions. So I'm going to close with a benediction and we'll pray for you guys. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And so, Jesus, we thank you for our church family. We thank you that you are still in our midst. God, that you, your heart is for blessing us, even in the midst of pressure, in the midst of this quarantine, in the midst of all the things that we're facing. And your heart is to bless others through us. So would you speak to us this week? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure to stay updated with Epicenter and how we're responding to this crisis at epicenter.org. Also, if you are not part of a life group or a home church group, we want you guys to join the Pastor Connect Point by clicking below at either 11.30 a.m. or 1.30 p.m. to get connected. Bless you guys. Bye.